welcome back. You're watching the RPG Club, where we look at tips and tricks for running campaigns and clubs in your schools and communities. I'm your host, Tori Norman, and today we're going to be looking at how to build a dungeon map using the new Dungeon Craft dungeon tile system. If you've not heard of the Dungeon Craft system, they just came off of a recently successful uh, Kickstarter campaign here in 2020, and if you want to learn more about them, you can check out my video linked below where I do a whole review on the Dungeon Craft system. But for today, we're going to be using the core Dungeon Craft set to create a dungeon map from the popular starter series coming out of the D&D starter set uh, called The Lost Minds of Phandelver. So if you are interested in playing this campaign as a player. This is just a spoiler tip. We are going to go into one of the maps and show all of the details, including some of the hidden areas. So if you want to play this uh, Lost Minds of Phandelver as a campaign participant, you're going to want to skip this video. But if you're planning to dungeon master this and you're interested in using the dungeon craft system, let me show you today how to create the Red Brands Hideout, a very classic dun um, secret dungeon crawl that um, is featured inside of that campaign. So before we get started, let me show you what the dungeon map looks like uh, straight out of the campaign manual. So this is the dungeon map here. Now you'll notice as we look at my version of the dungeon map, it won't be 100% perfect to scale exactly like this one. And you'll find any time you're using any kind of dungeon tiles, whether they're 3D printed or on paper like the Dungeon Craft system, they're not going to be 100% perfect. But they're close enough that the, your players will get the feel and essence of the dungeon map itself and still have a great time and still complete the missions uh, the same way as if you were running it just off of the map. So uh, that said, Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at what my version of this map looks like. So this is a top-down view of my entire map. And uh, in just a second, we'll go through each piece of it and kind of show you how I put it together. You can see that each piece using the Dungeon uh, Craft system is set up one room or one hallway at a time. Now, if you wanted to, you could set up the entire map all at once uh, and have it all ready to go, or you could lay it out room by room in kind of a fog of war style so that your uh, players don't see everything until they discover it. That's kind of my favorite way to do it, um, just because then they're not enticed to go looking for secret rooms they can see, but their players shouldn't know, their characters shouldn't know exist. Uh, so that said, I like to do the Fog of War style, but for today's video, I'm just going to lay it all out. It just kind of saves time as we're going through the review. All right, so as your players come into the Red Brand hideout for the first time, most of the players are going to come in through the cellar entrance. So I'm going to start there. If your players came in through the secret tunnel, we'll get to that when we get to the secret area. Um, so this is the cellar entrance, and... If you look, noticed on the original map, there is kind of this stairway system right at the entrance where they're up higher and they work their way down the stairs. So what I did for this one is in the dungeon part of the core dun dungeon craft system, they have these like stair systems and they're two-sided. So they've got a wood stair and a stone stairway or metal stairway. Um, but what I really needed here was just some kind of difference in texture to show the players that they're up on a different level. And so I used the, the stone version of those stairs. Uh, they were three by one, which was the perfect size. Whatever you tell the kids it is, they're going to believe it is. And that's kind of been my experience with the dungeon tiles as well. So I just tell them they're up here on this extra ledge. They've got the stairways to get them down and bring them down into the main area. Uh, there is kind of a jut out of the walls. And I've used these two stone squares to represent that and kind of give that indentation. And then the map to the cellar for Tresendar Manor has this huge pool right here. And I really didn't have anything good to represent that with. So I just used one of the fountains from the city section of the core dungeon craft set and figured, you know what, that's close enough. There's water. They're going to understand what that is. So that's that. 
If they decide to explore the storage room, they actually have some of these dungeon squares where the back side's blank on them, and you can do whatever you want, and then the other side has some kind of uh, texture to them, some kind of scene. So this one happened to be a storage scene. It worked really well. I know the bed's not in there. I guess if you wanted to, you could add the bed in there. Um, I just figured it wasn't necessary. So I just put in that. Um, you'll also notice that if you cut up the core set, all of the doors come in pairs because all of their hallways are at least too wide, but a lot of these rooms for Trascendar Manor needed smaller doors, so I actually took and cut the doors in half. Uh, they tell you not to cut along the solid lines, but you know I figured those are kind of guidelines more than rules, so I, I went ahead and cut them just so that I could get a smaller door. So I created a single door to get me into the storage room. And the way that I do it with my campaigns is I actually tell the, the students that this gray area on the other side of the door is the way the door swings. So that also helps us keep track of the direction in which the door swings. And that becomes very important when people are trying to hide behind doors or trying to decide if they're pulling in or pushing through a door. Uh, and for sometimes in the campaigns, that's important. So uh, that's kind of how we regulate that. Then if you proceed a little higher, I'm going to slide this up just a bit. We've got uh, that hallway right there, and I don't have a doorway right here. I guess I could put one there if I wanted to. I just tell the kids, hey, there's a door there, and uh, they bring themselves into the hallway. There's the pillars. Um, I decided to add them in just for texture. And then if you have looked at the campaign map, there is a secret pit there that kids can fall into. So the Dungeon Craft have these little 4x2 hallways. If you flip them over, they've got a pit in them. So I just use one of those and drop that in there uh, when they get surprised with the pit, and then the pit can stay there. Uh, we've got two metal doors here, and then we come into the crypt area. Now, one of the cool things that Dungeon Craft does is not only do they have uh, tiles, but they also have character icons that are cut from paper. For myself, I don't typically use them very often because I find that the core set doesn't have a lot of the, the types of creatures that I want. For example, they have a lot of goblins and orcs and, and zombies and skeletons, but they don't have bugbears. So that bugbears play a big role in The Lost Mind of Phandelver. So I actually end up still 3D printing all of my characters and put placing those out on the map. But what um, with this particular room, I actually did use the skeleton icons, and I did that because at the beginning, the skeletons are more a prop item than they are an actual character, and it's not until the characters get into the room and disturb it that they activate those skeletons, and so if I laid down 3D characters to begin with, I feel like it would spook my players into thinking that the... Um, skeletons are real and prepping themselves for battle when they may their characters may not have thought that way otherwise. So I lay them out there as 2D icons to emphasize the fact that they're just a prop, an aesthetic item in the room to add character to the room. And then once they activate, then I can remove the tiles and throw down 3D characters that then represent those skeletons that then they have to battle. And so that's the way that I did that room. Um, you can kind of do it however you want, but I feel like having those icons there uh, in 2D format just kind of curbs that fear that the characters might get otherwise. Um, so there's those. And then uh, in the map itself, you can explore the um, the tombs, the coffins and so if the characters do i flip them over to indicate that they've opened them and explored them that way they can kind of keep track of what they've gone looking in so that's that room uh once they go through that room they can go into the prison cells so let's take a look at those the way that i did the prison cells for this one i was kind of scratching my head on this because there aren't any real fences or uh, bars that are available with this uh, dungeon tile system but they do have these cages and they are intended to be cages. So you can see, I think they've got like wolves underneath them. But I figured if it's a two, it's a uh, four square wide room that I used. And so I figured, you know, these 
our two by two cages, they're perfect size. So I just put two cages on one side, two cages on the other, and I tell them those are gel cells. And that seems to work really well. So that's how I did the jail cells. And then, you know, for the prisoners, if you want to add the prisoners in there, I don't have 3D characters printed for the prisoners yet, but you could drop the two women down there. Um, and the little boy, if you wanted to, just get some townspeople 3D printed uh, characters and throw them on top of it so that they know that those are in the jail cells. And then if you wanted to, you could cut up a couple of doors and add some doors on there. Uh, or just use, you know, double doors here in the middle, since that's where the doors are supposed to be. And use those for the doors to get in. Now, on the map itself, there is a pile of clothes on the far end. Uh, there isn't a dungeon tile for a pile of clothes. So again, you have to be creative and kind of use what you have. So I decided to use the bones and just pile the bones there and then I can describe it in the storyline or I can just change the storyline and say it's a pile of bones and they can go rifting through that for stuff if they want to and the same rewards could be found in the same place. Uh, so that's that room. The hallway is a little wider because again everything in Dungeon Craft is too wide when you're dealing with hallways. So the hallway runs into this room right here and this uh, small armory it's supposed to be a small room, so I actually just used a 2x4 hallway and uh, threw some crates down on that and used that for the armory. And then again, I can just describe it once I get there. Now, your characters might run into or might discover some secret doorways. And there really isn't a dungeon tile for secret doorways. So what I decided to do with that is if you look at the chests that you can get uh, with Dungeon Craft, some of the chests actually, if you flip them over, have coins and gold inside of them. And some of them are just empty and kind of have almost what looks like maybe a secret stairway or something. But I figured, you know what, this works really well for a secret entrance. So I use that as my secret entrance icon. And so anytime they discover a secret entrance like the one up here in the corner, I just lay that tile down and say, look, that's a secret entrance. And that's how I do the secret entrances on the map. So they discovered the secret entrance. We're going to move over to the cavern section. Take a look at that. So when they get into the cavern section here, um, I just used a 4x4 square room to represent kind of this room. And I guess it should have some boxes and crates and stuff. I didn't, I didn't put those out, but there are some things there that they can poke around and look at. So I'll throw a few of those on there. Um, but it's supposed to have just an open archway here. So I didn't want to put doors on it. So actually what I did is there are some corner hallways that look like these as part of Dungeon Craft, and they recommend that you cut it square like this one is. But what I actually did was take one of them and again broke the rules and cut on the, the solid lines and cut it out like this because I figured, you know what, you don't really need this space here in the middle. It's not doing anything for us per se, unless I guess I wanted to put them together and make a big room. Uh, but I took the empty 4x4 four four square and I placed it right there to cover up the doorway uh, or to cover up the wall and make it look open so that I could create that sense of an archway there. Uh, so that's how I, I indicated the openness to that room. Um, you could just scribble it out. These are uh, dry erase and wet erase enabled. So you could just scribble it out and say there's a doorway there if you wanted to and that would work fine. Um, once they get into the caverns themselves, um, we'll take a look at the cavern room here. It, they don't really have anything in the dungeon tiles that would fit this odd shaped long room. So this is where I just have the mat underneath my dungeon tiles and I just scribbled in the, the chasm and created it that way. Uh, I did use these stone wall pieces along the edges to kind of create that, that sense that it's a rough stone cavernish room instead of a, a nicely carved out room like the rest of them are. Um, they do have some bridges in the dungeon craft system, but they're really, really long and they didn't fit well here. So again, I used those stairs that I used before, flipped them over to the um, wood side and laid them out and they look perfect as a um, a bridge and it's it's passable and believable as a bridge. So I laid that down. Um, I've got the little pillars that are there as well and then for the secret entrance side of it, if your characters come in from the secret entrance side, 
Um, I just used a few of the cliffs from the wilderness parts of the Dungeon Craft core set and put those in there to kind of indicate where the entrance would be and kind of block this area off as being walled. Um, again, if you've got a secret entrance over here, you can indicate that with the little secret entrance icon. And also up at the top in the in glass staffs area. So we've got the bed area with um, the bugbears and the goblins, and then you've got the little stairwell that goes down into the cornered hallway that leads you into the main room where most of the red brands are hiding out. Uh, you've got the hallway on the other side of that as well. It's supposed to be kind of S-curved, but I just didn't have the room for it, so I just used a straight hallway, and that seemed to work fine. Now, when I got to Glassstaff's room, I ran out of 4x4 four four squares. Um, if I could add any recommendations to Dungeon Craft, I would love to see them create an expansion with more rooms and hallways so that we can do big dungeon crawls, because I just didn't have enough rooms. I would have liked a few more. So what I ended up doing for this, since this is kind of the posh side of the the uh, hideout anyway, is I actually just used a couple of the homes from the town part of the core set and just covered up stuff I didn't want to with tables and things. So he's got his desk here at the far end. He's got his bed. It's not twisted the right way, but who cares? He did a little of interior decorating. And then I just used a barrel on the doorway to cover up this table over here that I didn't want. Um, so that created his bedroom and then his little office area is supposed to be one room i really didn't find anything that i could use that i liked so i ended up just using this apothecary shop and called that good and said you know what if they wanted to go snooping around in a few extra rooms i'm going to use some artistic license and add them there so um anyway that's kind of the breakdown of how i did Trascendar manor and the uh the red brand hideout Take a look at it. If you've got any recommendations, leave your comments below. If you have a map that you would like to see me build with uh, Dungeon Craft, go ahead and leave that in the comments too, and we may feature that in a future video.